So, um, as introduced by Heyman, I would like to share with you um, the no newest trends about low-code, no-code. Why it is so important for us IT folks to embrace it and how we can actually bring it to the society and the world because it's so important. And uh, the, you know, why it's so important, I would like to elaborate within the next couple of minutes. Let me start with the question, um, is low-code something new? Well, this guy will give us the answer. The way you get programmer productivity is not by increasing the lines of code per programmer per day. That doesn't work. The way you get programmer productivity is by eliminating lines of code you have to write. Right? The line of code that's the fastest to write, that never breaks, that doesn't need maintenance, is the line you never had to write. Right? Right. So what the goal here is to eliminate 80% of the code that you have to write for your app. That's the goal. Okay. It's not to... And, and so along the way, if we can provide WYSI this and WYSI that and visual this and visual that, well, that's fine. But the high order bid is to eliminate 80% of the code. So who recognizes who that is? Come on. Steve Jobs, I heard, hopefully. Some of you maybe don't know him anymore because it was 1997 when he was at the Apple's developer uh, conference, World Dev Developer Conference, where he actually gave this answer to a developer who asked the question, so, hey, Steve, how can code make me more productive? And that was his answer. So the question is, why do we care today, a couple of years later, because obviously then we didn't have that many tools as we have today. And again, this is the answer. As you know, we are in a fourth industrial revolution right now. It's actually the digital transformation which is going on. And this is what it means. Digital transformation actually transforms our whole society, in particular in, in the area of industry, where actually 80% of manufacturing tasks can be automated. In smart building or smart energy, we can reduce life cycle costs if we have the right digital means who tell us how to save energy, how to save means. We have mobility, uh, where digital transformation can um, increase the transport capacity without um, any building addi additional infrastructure or even stroke-related cost, which can be reduced with digital means. So this is basically what the current challenge is, and this is where we are in. But there is a problem, respectively a challenge. In these days, you guys are basically not enough. We have much more demand in regards to applications, in regards to development, um, than we can, even, can we ever um, satisfy. Gartner predicts that actually there will be five times more demand in application development than we are ever able to supply with. So we need to take basically a, a solution which helps us to bridge this gap between demand and supply. And IT leaders are desperately looking not only after you guys, but also after technology which makes you productive. So this is where low code comes into play. Low code helps us to actually get more of us, of you, being acquainted with development. It helps actually to create the so-called um, citizen developers. Gartner predicts that actually uh, we can see up to 20% of a company to become citizen developers. Now imagine what enormous potential there is to satisfy then the demand and also bridge the gap. So there is, in addition to that, of course, and we come now back to the question which has been asked by the developer to Steve, uh, Stephen Jobs, you know, how can actually um, code make me more productive? Well, this is it. Um, 
when we have basically, we are also providing, as you know, maybe um, a low-code platform which is called Mendix. And when we have asked our customers, our developers using low-code, this is what they came back with. Sorry, that was too quick. Oops, Allah. I'm going forward instead of backward. Sorry. Okay. So this is basically what the guys came back with. They said that they were able to produce um, software for 53% less cost. They were actually to accelerate the um, development of particular application. I can also confirm that because we have also a near shop uh, hub, near, uh, near shore hub here with developing colleagues who are actually delivering to us um, applications which in the past have taken months and now they are able to deliver these applications within weeks. So an increase of productivity you could have never thought of. And the great thing is really that with low code you can actually bring capabilities of programming to people which have never been in universities. We basically have different backgrounds which have different ethnics. Now we can basically get all these colleagues helping us to develop codes, code and applications with the help of low-code, no-code platforms. And that's the reason why 75% of all IT leaders are actually saying um, that low-code is a trend the organization will not be and can't afford to miss. So if you have not been convinced about the advantages so far, I would like to share with you some of the figures about the market, about the low-code, no-code market. And it's enormous, as you can see. We are starting with a low base in 2019 with approximately $20 billion, and it will be increasing with the next couple of years up to $120 billion. Um, and the growing rate here is at 30% a year until 2030. I think it's enormous, and that's the reason why more and more providers, partners are actually conquering uh, the market with uh, providing their tool set. And yes, Mendix being one of them, uh, offering a great um, user experience for um, the developers. Having said that, I know that when you are talking about low-code, very often I hear um, from colleagues that a low-code well, you can, you can use it, but it's only for easy-peasy stuff, you know. It's nothing you can really do, uh, do complex things with. I can tell you that in the last couple of years, low-code platforms have really advanced. So in these days, this is basically what our customer tells us. This is what they are using uh, Mendix for. They are able to create innovative solutions. They are even able to create B2C portals. They are able to increase operational productivity. They are able to do legacy migration, basically moving old on-premise applications into the cloud, make them cloud native. Now, how did we do that? And this is basically just to share with you how fast you can actually go on this journey. So within one year of having introduced Mendix, my team basically, and the capacity of CIO, we have introduced Mendix as a low-code platform to the business. And we are 290,000 people at Siemens. And what we were able to achieve it in one year is really to create over 200 applications which have been built by citizen developers. And they are actually, um, overall, we have 15,000 people creating these apps. And these apps are attracting over 100,000 users. So I think this speaks for itself. Now, just to give you some good examples of really some ad, you know, advanced um, solutions you can build with a low-code platform. For example, our Siemens financial business is actually a bank where we were able to create, or the SFS colleagues basically, the Siemens financial colleagues were able to create an app which helps with automating the loan business very quickly. And they were able, for example, we were also able to use a low-code platforming um, app, platform app, um, coded app within uh, Factory, where basically we are able now to track and trace down material flow um, to really allow for reducing the material needed within the production. And last but not least, also about a, you know, a training app 
where you basically are attracting thousands of people who are now um, indulged with this very nice looking front end to really at, um, use the learning platform we have built in the back end of it. So having said that, this is basically how we did it in terms of process. Basically, Mendix is allowing you to create solutions both for cloud, for the edge, if you need still on premise, but I would take, stay away from that, for mobile and also within the IoT environment. We are using it for legacy modernization and we have equipped all our business colleagues who want to have it with a license to really build with low code uh, Mendix. And the most important thing is also for you to know that overall, there will, you need to select the local platforms you want to use. So we have also looked at preferred platforms. One of them being, I don't want to make the marketing here, but also being something like power apps for your uh, personal productivity, where for business transactional um, applications programming, you rather use an enhanced platform like Mendix. Now, is that all it? Um, this is basically how we did it also process my to scale it up. So you can see that basically we have started off with the foundation. We have also conducted workshops with the business to understand what are uh, you know, easy to, uh, to harvest use cases which are not too complex and then scaling up into more complexity. Right now, as of today, we have basically 13 application factories. They are not within IT, they are outside in the business. And these guys basically are um, helping themselves being self-sufficient and, and transform their uh, environment by digitizing their processes in their environment, be it for themselves or be it for the customer outside there. Now, is that all? Are we basically, do we believe this is heaven on earth? No, of course, there are also limits of low code, no code. One of them being obviously, once you have created a great application, Within, uh, with the low-code environment, you know, people start liking it, and then obviously they try to build more and more logic into it. And this is basically where, indeed, a low-code platform might have its Im limits. It will basically not, um, it will maybe require some functionality with the standard prepackaged components of a low-code platform uh, is not able to give you. So that's basically where you also start to write additional functionality. But again, altogether, I think it's no harm. It's just that we need to be, and you need to be aware of the limits. For sure, there are also, with that, there are also security limitations, which means, to a certain degree, there is pre-configured package coming with the low-code platform, but you also need to ensure that you have a back-end integration into your enterprise where you are using these low-code coded platform. And this is basically where you also will be asking the IT colleagues to help you to integrate these, um, the data basically safely into the low-code application and also a safely back-end integration. And yes, it's true. Again, this is low-code. This is not no-code. With low-code, it still means that people still have to have a little bit of an affinity to technology. They still need to get acquainted with a low-code platform to understand which components can be used for which purpose and obviously can need to be trained to a certain degree. But still, the barrier and um, the entry point for a person who has not studied um, computer science and now basically wants to still um, increase productivity in his environment or for his customers, he or she easily can use a low-code platform to perform the task. So I'm coming to the end, and um, the messages I would like to share with you is number one, we need more of you, for sure. Um, and that's the reason, but obviously you are not enough so far. Um, so that's the reason why low code is a good means to A, increase the workforce to help with um, the digital transformation demand to basically to satisfy that demand and B also um, to make you guys more productive because low code is definitely a true technology which also makes us IT folks, you guys developer productive. But the most important thing I would like you to take away with you is that I really want you 
to evangelize about low code. It's not an evil, it is something which will really help you. It is helping us to build more diverse teams. It is helping us to really satisfy the demand of the digital transformation. It is something each company needs to build into his agenda. And you, please, need to build it into your portfolio of technology components you are actually uh, using in your day-to-day -day business. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to meet you at the Mandic stand. I'll talk to you later, maybe, if you have any Q&A.